Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. Anatoly Yakovenko, co-founder of Solana, is aware that Solana's disruptions are concerning to its subscribers. However, a network solution may be in the horizon. Since its inception in 2020, the young hybrid proof of history and proof of stake blockchain has seen five significant outages. Three of the five incidents have happened this year, each as a consequence of either faults in Solana's programming or the network getting overloaded with bot generated traffic. Yakovenko feels that FireDancer, the second Solana client revealed in August, would be a long-term solution because to the fact that it will have its own software development team. Jump Crypto, a Web3 company, is creating Fire Dancer in collaboration with the Solana Foundation. In the next one to two years, Jump Crypto expects Fire Dancer to significantly scale Solana, letting it can process more transactions more efficiently. Because it's a distinct team, the likelihood of their code having the same flaws as ours is almost nil, Yakovenko added. It is a monolithic chain, therefore it is similar to Ethereum, except it performs all operations simultaneously. The co-founder described the most recent Solana outage, in which a misconfigured validator caused the Solana network to become unclear about the right fork, leading the network to halt. However, such failures never place the cache or program state of any user at jeopardy since Solana has 2,000 validators, Yakovenko said. Given that Solana has more than 2,000 validators and nearly 3,400 replicates of its network, there are several backup options available in the event of a catastrophic failure. As long as one of these copies remains, it is possible to restore the whole network, stated Yakovenko. In the tweet, LFG reaffirmed its intention to compensate smaller investors with the remainder of its asset reserves. This tweet is the first update on the matter since a May Twitter thread, in which LFG said that it intended to utilize all of its remaining cash to compensate surviving users of UST, smallest holders first, but has not yet done so due to ongoing litigation. After its fall in May 2022, the organization utilized a portion of its reserve cash to assist prop up the dollar peg of the UST stablecoin. At the time of publication, the reserve consisted of 313 BTC, 39,914 BNB, 1,973,554 AVAX, 1,847,079,725 UST and 222,713,500,000 LUNC. South Korean authorities have recently frozen crypto assets that reportedly belong to LFG. Since May 2022, LFG has not transferred BTC or other tokens from its wallet, fiercely denying the allegations. Following the collapse of TerraUSD, some USD investors vented their anger on Reddit, causing amateur investor Persian capital to offer a method for the allocation of cash. LFG might repay 30 cents per USD for any tiny Terra USD investor that deposited USD in Terraform Labs crypto bank anchor. Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum, agreed with the notion at the time. The Lunar Foundation Guard was established in January 2022 to aid with the expansion of the Terra ecosystem and change the then predominantly controlled stablecoin market. Du Quan, co-founder and chief executive officer of Terraform Labs, Nicholas Plachers, a founding member of Terraform, Khan of Korea, president of Jump Crypto, Remy Teto of Real Vision, Jonathan Carras of Levana Protocol and Jose Maria Delgado of Delphi Digital are among its members. The South Korean Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently cancelled Kwon's passport, 
after officials requested that he be added to Interpol's so-called red list. As a result of Terry USD's fall, Kwon is facing a class action lawsuit for fraud in South Korea. Hedera Hashgraph, H bar, price continues to demonstrate strength as price moves with a notable breach from a downtrend zone versus tether USDT. The Hedera Hashgraph, H bar, price was not left out as the price broke out of its extended daily range, with the price going upward. This occurred as the crypto market capitalization rebounded from its weekly low as the market remained bullish. Source, Binance As the price of HBAR was unable to break out with significant volume in prior months, it was placed in a box resembling a range. The price of HBAR remained between $0.05 cents and $0.077 until breaking out and beginning an upward trend. The price of HBAR might be poised for a breakout as it attempts to climb to the $0.1 zone, following a long-term trend and a positive outlook for most altcoins in October, which many call to as the month of October. HBAR's use case has attracted a large number of traders, investors, and large companies, which might function as a significant catalyst to affect the price of HBAR in the near future with many predicting a price increase to $1. The price of HBAR continues to demonstrate strength, as it pulls some gains despite the market appearing to have stalled in price movement. After hitting a daily low of $0.05, cents, the price of HBAR rallied to a daily high of $0.082 before being rejected into a downtrend channel as it struggled to break out. The price of HBAR is trying to break out of its downtrend channel, if successful, the price of HBAR may surge quickly to $0.1, with bulls obtaining major price control. MakerDAO will invest $500 million in conventional assets. The issuer of the fourth-largest stablecoin, by market capitalization, is shifting $500 million from its balance sheet to short-term U.S. treasuries and corporate bonds in order to boost its asset exposure and income sources. After a vote by token holders, Maker has formally declared the conclusion of the $1 million pilot transaction. Maker Governance has executed the first Dow Balance Sheet Premium Bond Investment. MIP65, Monetalis Clydesdale will develop a Maker Vault to invest PSM's USDC in liquid bond strategies, capped at $500 million DAI. The remaining $400 million will be allocated through additional executive votes, according to Maker. The allocation will consist of 80% short-term U.S. Treasuries and 20% corporate bonds. According to the most recent governance poll titled Asset Allocation for MIP65 Clydesdale, the allocation of these funds was decided by MKR holders and delegates. According to Maker, the entire 500 million DAI would be split between digital asset bank Signum and financial management company Bailey Gifford. Signum asserts that it is cooperating with investing titan BlackRock on the initial phase of the project. Signum is partnering with BlackRock Switzerland to invest $250 million in an iShares ETF's portfolio managed by BlackRock. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Remember, the social media platforms will be up and running next week. With the last channel being deleted, we must now start over. Don't forget we have a $50 giveaway for when we hit 200 subs and followers on all social platforms. We also raised the giveaway for 1,000 subs on YouTube to $200 giveaway. Don't miss out. All you have to do is like, follow, subscribe, and tag as many people as you can. We will be watching who tags who and keeping tabs on which one of those tags actually followed and subscribed. I repeat, this is not a random drawing. Anyone can compute the giveaways themselves. Good day, good night, and goodbye.